When React first showed up, it was a small library to build interactive UIs in the browser. Soon enough, people started building full-blown web apps with it. But the apps built with React had an inherent problem. Since React was initially a client-side library, the users were required to download and pass a lot of JavaScript before anything shows up on the screen. For smaller apps, this was not a big issue, but for the apps of any considerable size, the issue was severe as their users have to wait a long time before they interact with the applications. This means losing customers and hence the business. So people started creating frameworks around React to solve these problems, which led us to frameworks like Next.js, Remix, Gatsby, which tried to alleviate this problem by introducing things like server-side rendering, aka SSR. But SSR only partially solved the problem as a component does not become interactive until it is hydrated on the client side. Apart from this, there are several other problems such as sending too much JavaScript down to the clients. Now take this example where you have to send marked and sanitized library to the client so that the client can use those libraries to create the final HTML. Inefficient lazy loading. Although you can lazy load a component in React, there are two challenges right now. First, the developer has to remember that they can lazy load a component. Most of the time, they forget it and import the components directly. Second, the component will only be downloaded when its parent component is fully loaded and displayed. This leads to more waiting time for the end users. Client server waterfalls. Suppose you have an application like this where component A houses component B and component B houses component C. Each one of these have their own data fetching logic. So in this arrangement, component C won't begin loading until component B finishes and component B won't begin loading until component A finishes, hence creating a waterfall-like setup. So let's see what React server components are. A server component is a React component which runs on the server and only the resulting HTML is shipped down to the client. The server components are never shipped to the client. This way, you do most of the heavy lifting on the server side, making your React app more snappy. Let's see how React server components solve the problems we saw earlier. Sending too much JavaScript down to the clients. Since we ship only the resulting HTML, there is absolutely zero JavaScript that is shipped to the client. Lazy loading. Server component treat all the imports as potential candidate for code splitting. Additionally, since the code runs on the server, the component to be lazy loaded is already known and the client can readily download it. Client server waterfall. Although the waterfall is not going to go away, the round trips to the server will take considerably lesser time as data fetching code is moved from the client to the server. React server components do have some limitations, such as you can't use a state or rendering hooks like use effect or browser APIs and custom hooks that depend on state or effects. So what happens to the regular components that we have been using for as long as we remember? Well, they will keep on working as expected. It is just that they will be called client components from now on. The client components have restrictions too. Like you cannot import server components into the client component or call any server related utility from the client component. But that does not mean you can't use server components as children to the client component. In fact, here is a diagram from React's own presentation which shows that you can mix and match both. It is just that you need to pass in the server component as a prop to the client component. That way, the HTML produced by the server component will be slotted in at the correct place when the client component renders. All the components are shared components by default in this new architecture, which means they can work on both the server and the client. If you want to make a component a client component, you need to slap use client at the top of that component's file. Now that we understand the new architecture, let's see how a simple app like this, where we have a root server component and a child client component is rendered. React server components right now do not work out of the box on its own and require assistance from a framework like Next.js and Hydrogen for routing and bundling. So when a request comes in, the framework will map it to some server component and figure out the props that need to be passed to this component from the request. In this case, it is our root server component. The framework will then ask React to render the server component and its props. React will render this root component by converting all of its children into the JSON description of the UI. Yeah, they invented a new format to represent the UI. A root server component can have three types of children. The native components such as div or span etc. The server components and the client components. 
the native components are converted into JSON representation of the UI which looks something like this. The J defines that it is an actual React element. The client components are also converted into a JSON representation. But instead of the actual component, the JSON representation contains the bundle reference to the code for the component so that it can be resolved on the client side by the bundler. It looks something like this. The M defines the bundle reference. The server components are also reduced to the similar JSON representation by recursively calling the same logic which is converting this root server component. So you will end up with something like this. This JSON data will be delivered to the client by the framework. On the client, React will construct the UI using the JSON data it has received. One thing to note here is that since the server and the client are using JSON to represent the UI, the data can be streamed and React does not have to wait for the stream to finish in order to start showing something on the UI. So how can you start using React server components today? For that, you have to use a framework like Next.js or Hydrogen because React server components need external help for routing and bundling. Hence, the React team is currently focusing on providing the server component experience via this framework. Now you must be wondering, are server components going to replace server-side rendering? The answer is not really. These two technologies are going to complement each other. React converts the server components into HTML, which SSR can consume and create the entire UI on the server side. This will greatly reduce the amount of components the meta frameworks have to hydrate on the client side. This brings us to the conclusion of this video. If you have found this video useful, please give it a like as creating such videos takes a lot of time and research. In the upcoming video, we will see how to use React server components in Next.js 13. Till then, take care.